So the new trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is now out, and in this video we're going to be doing a big breakdown to discuss the movie, all the hidden details in the teaser, easter eggs, and things you missed. I also want to talk about some plot leaks, and this will explain why Janet fears the quantum realm and her relationship with Kang. I won't however spoil the ending of the movie without giving you a big warning, and as always these leaks might not even be accurate, so take them with a pinch of salt. Now who here is like, after all why not? Should I read the plot leaks? It's also about 4am in the morning here in the UK, so the thumbs up, it's massively appreciated, and let's get into the video. You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. You're an Avenger. You have a daughter, but you've lost a lot of time, like me. We can help each other with that. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. What's that? Time. Now the trailer opens with a shot of San Francisco. This is of course a location where the last two Ant-Man movies took place, and it's also the city where Shang-Chi started. We'll talk about this later on in the video, but there's lots of links to the Eternals, Negabands, and the Ten Rings, possibly tying those movies together for the next phase in the MCU. Kang says that Scott's an interesting man, and his narration dominates the entire trailer, really giving the idea that he's a major force to be reckoned with in this movie. And from here, we see Scott and Hope on the red carpet, showing how they've gone from being on the run in Civil War, to now being widely admired by the people of the MCU. Now, the MCU has been littered with clues that Scott has cashed in on the fame that came with him helping to save the universe. Humanity was at its lowest point after the snap, and for five years the world wallowed in depression over the ones they lost, and the anxiety of how fragile their lives were. We know from Hayward and WandaVision that these times were dark, and even the best heroes like Hawkeye became cruel vigilantes. Scott returned from the quantum realm, and it was his return that ushered in the time travel plot that helped to save the universe. So man's a big name now, and Ms. Marvel opened with a nod to his podcast, Big Me, Little Me. Wakanda Forever also promoted his book on the news ticker, which we know is called Look Out for the Little Guy. This book will pop in the movie, with Scott doing a reading for it, and how greatness comes from little things. Just tell your girl that you're loser. Now he's basically going to be the person that cashed in on the trauma, and he's used the public's interest to catapult his profile. If you've seen The Haunting of Hill House, and you know a character in that did something similar, and this caused issues with her family and also his friends. You of course have already seen the Baskin and Robbins employee of the century photo, and along with manager Dale returning, we saw Scott's uniform in a glass case. It was also his employee photo, and this had the name Jack on his name badge. Now we know the name Jack was picked because it's the same one as Paul Rudd's son, and we'll talk about how this movie is about parents and the relationships that they have with their children. Now we've course met an adult Cassie Lang in Endgame, and she's going to be taking more of a role than she has in previous films. She's sort of going to be reflecting how Scott was before he became a superhero, and will have been in prison for doing Robin Hood-esque deeds and helping out the poor. Scott of course did this, and he carried out crimes against corporations that were extorting people. That's sort of the same thing with Cassie, who will be a hero in her own way, whilst her father gallivants about the catwalks, bragging about how he's won, as he completely ignores causes that he doesn't think will benefit him. Now this movie is very much going to be about the pair connecting, after having grown slightly estranged since the events of Endgame. In the first two Ant-Man films, Scott wanted nothing more than to have time with her, and she was the first person he went to after coming back from the Quantum Realm. Now judging by this new look, it seems like Kang will be offering Scott more time with his daughter, in a reality where Thanos maybe never carried out the snap. We know that these exist due to the Multiverse of Madness, which show that the Illuminati were able to defeat Thanos before he could carry it out. Thus, their world was far more advanced than the 616, and the planet was also protected by Ultron bots, which likely stopped the majority of crime. It seemed way more like a utopia, and Kang could offer Scott a world where he can live with his daughter without having to be an Avenger or having lost those five years. She of course also deals with a lot of trauma because of those five years, and it looks like she's going to have to wrestle with the idea of potentially losing Scott again here. Now the Quantum Realm device has actually had some info shared on it from what we know about the trailer that was shown at Comic Con. This contained a lot of extra shots that haven't been shown yet, and it had Cassie talking about the device itself. 
Turns out she actually made this during the five years between the snap and the blip as a way to try and rescue her father. I don't know how she knew he was in the quantum realm, but from the Comic Con event, we know that's why it was created. That backstage scene had it talking about how she made it with a partner, and as it's not with Hank or Janet, then it might be with someone like Ghost or even Bill Foster. He used to be Goliath, he was helping Ghost, and after losing her father, he might have turned his attention to Cassie. The orb glows blue, and it's possible it was created by Kang, and that this was sent to Cassie, which is why it looks similar to the orbs on the ship that we see later as part of Kang's forces. Now Cassie is going to be getting her own suit too, and it's likely that she'll be going under the name Stinger. She was known as Statura at one point in the comics, but the name Stinger keeps it more in line with Ant-Man and the Wasp. She's also going to get captured by Kang too, and then held hostage so that her father helps her out. It can rewrite existence and shatter timelines. You cannot trust him. I don't care who this guy is. I just lost so much. He can give us a second chance. Let me make this easy for you. You will bring me what I need. Or everything you call a life will end. Now, throughout, Kang's very much acting like someone who can give Scott what he wants, but in order to do this, he's going to have to do something very bad. He Who Remains was very much thought of as being the devil, and due to this deal, Kang echoes that too. Even the entire thing with Kang here is based around the idea that he's the ruler of the underworld, and this hammers home the notion that the entire thing's a deal with the devil. He carries demonic imagery like his glowing eyes, and he has powers that can far match anything that mortal men can throw at him. The Orange Portal 2 is almost like a fire, and there's definitely this notion that he's trying to escape hell. This is obviously taking him into other realities, but I think it's an important bit of symbolism. Scott doesn't really care though, as he's more bothered about his daughter than the rest of the multiverse. There's definitely this idea of the needs of the few, and how helping Kang could destroy all reality, which is why Scott's been selected. He is one of the only people that can help Kang, and he's in a precarious position because his daughter's the one in danger. Ant-Man isn't the type of person to make sacrifices, and this is of course also why the Avengers lost to Thanos in Infinity War. He also just wants those five years back, and again, this could lead itself to Kang possibly offering a better life. The deleted scenes for Loki Season 1 had He Who Remains doing something similar, with there apparently being moments where we'd see Loki and Sylvie being offered realities where they had all their hearts desired. Now Kang's costume looks so good, and I know a lot of it was shown in the first trailer, but seeing how much they've nailed it really fills me with a lot of confidence. Kang could have easily been a weird looking villain, and he's one of those characters that I saw years ago in the comics and thought it would be so difficult to pull this off, but they've managed to do it. Kang's mask is a big thing, with a blue face cover almost being like a visor in the film. The comics have had a number of different materials for this, and in the recent graphic novel Only Myself Left to Conquer, we see different versions of him. Most MCU masks these days, they, they just wrap around someone's head after coming out the back of the costume, and I think a similar thing is going to be happening here. We've also seen this shade of blue before in the MCU, and I might be reaching, but it reminds me a lot of the visors that were used on the quantum suits in Endgame. Now time for a joke. What, what do they call it when a bunch of Kang variants all sleep with the same person at the same time? A Kang Bang. Thanks for me all week. Anyway, this suit needs to be heavily armor laden because Kang is going on vast journeys through the multiverse and into other realities. Multiverse of Madness showed us there were some environments like the paint world and that he needs to be prepared for anything. Therefore, it's sort of like an astronaut suit and no matter what he encounters, he's prepared for the environment. The quantum realm itself is also really unstable, and in the skyline you can see these massive holes and almost portal-like structures. These look a lot like the tunnels that were in the realm when the Avengers dived down into it, and potentially these could allow Kang to travel into other worlds and through time. Now over the top of this we can hear Janet talking about how he can rewrite existence, shatter timelines, hit the subscribe button, and that he basically can't be trusted. The plot leaks have kind of filled in the details with this, and though they might not be correct, they've said they go way back. They state that when she landed in the quantum realm that she wandered through the wilderness and made a home down there. One night she saw a ship crashing, which is possibly shown in the clip where we see a hooded figure looking at something crashing down from the sky. She's then meant to be chased by some creatures before Kang saves her and this is how they meet. 
Now these creatures were potentially shown in the first trailer, with Janet standing on a rocky platform whilst a monster closes in on her. Either way, Kang will be someone like her who's stuck down there and the pair will work together in order to fix his ship. We'll apparently hear his name Nathaniel and they'll spend a lot of time getting to know each other. During this time, Janet will discover his true plans and will learn that he has a ship which can travel across the multiverse. Kang will have conquered several realities at this point and he'll very much be ushering in the prophecy that he who remains warned Loki about. In case you don't remember, he said that he discovered multiversal travel early on in his life and this allowed him to open gateways to other worlds. Here he met versions of himself across the multiverse, however with an infinite amount of people that were good, there were also versions of him who were completely evil. Because of the power they'd unlocked, they realised they had a way to travel across multiple realms and conquer them across the multiverse. This led to all out war between realities, in which several timelines fought it out so that they could have dominance. Judging by the rumours on Secret Wars, this will also be what plays out in that movie, with several timelines fighting against a supreme version of Kang in order to stop him taking over everything. A he who remains managed to defeat the evil Kangs, and because of this he decided to form the TVA, which would stop offshoot realities by wiping them out. This would stop the possibility that a version of him could be born that would want to destroy the multiverse. With He Who Remains dead, the MCU is now in a state where Kang can once more rise up, allowing this one's ship to be fixed, could usher in the end of all worlds. Janet apparently ended up sabotaging his ship upon learning this, and she fled leaving him stuck in the quantum realm for decades plotting his revenge. Now, there was a line in the first trailer where Kang said that he'd help someone get home and give them more time. I can get you home. And give you more time. If you help me, so what's it gonna be? Ant Man. This was presented in a way in which it was aimed at Scott as an exchange for helping him out. However, it is possible that it could actually be Janet. She's been stuck in the quantum realm and has lost out on decades with her daughter. Either way, Kang wants Scott to help him out and this is likely the key to starting his ship up once more so he can travel a multiverse again. In that time he started up Chronopolis and has made a civilization down there that's also got warring factions against it. This is the rebels who all seem like new characters, however there is one that seems like Acro yeah, though it might just be a design similarity. Kang has his Pythians though who are in the comics and their forces that fight for him and resemble how the villain looks. Now they are escorted by some of these in the trailer and we can also see my boy Modok, 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 Modok! <laughs> now Modok has been heavily hidden from the marketing but little leaks have made their way to the surface and according to early reports he'll be an evolution of Darren Cross. Cross was defeated at the end of Ant-Man and as he was sucked into the quantum realm his body distorted due to the suit malfunctioning after Scott broke it. This is why the proportions are all wrong and it's a nice way to explain why he's this way in the MCU. In the comics, the character George Tarleton has had a number of different reasons as to why his body grew the way that it did, with it being sometimes down to disease and sometimes because he grew his brain too big. Modoc has a distinctive look and sure it's goofy, yeah, but that's, that's what also makes him so memorable. You, you'll never forget this guy when you see him. If you want to support the channel and get some cool merch out of it, We've just launched this Ant-Man Size Matters t-shirt which will be linked in the pinned comment and also the description. In case you don't know, me, Greg from Real Rejects and Ryanary, bloody, bloody Ryanary, start up a company called Zero Edition that sells merch from all our channels. We've spent ages making sure the material is top quality, the shirts are all unique and it helps us make videos like this mediocre one you're watching right now. Each one is part of a limited run though, so once it's gone, it's gone you punk, so make sure you, make sure you go whilst it's still hot. And from here we get some expanded shots of what we've seen with Janet and Co before, riding on top of that stingray looking creature. However, beyond this we also get a large golden ring structure that carries special glyphs on it. These have slowly been popping up in the MCU at several points, and as always, it could, it, it could be connected. It could, it could all be connected. Now the glyphs appeared in the Eternal ship, and they were also something that showed up on the Ten Rings, as well as the bands in Ms. Marvel. I know I'm not the first person to point this out, and I, I think Ryan Airy. Shut the f up, Ryan Airy! Bloody Ryan Airy. I think he did a full video talking about them. Shut the f up, Ryan Airy! These might just be Marvel giving nods to their greater universe, or there could be a reason that they've chosen these devices because they're all linked together. 
Shang-Chi, of course, ended with a beacon being found, and it's possible that this came from the quantum realm rather than being something out in space. The Nega bands could also open doorways to other realities, and they gave someone the ability to travel through time, which, if linked with Chronopolis, could explain how all this stuff happens. Now, Scott clearly goes into further parts of the quantum realm, and here he runs into what could be variants of himself. We see several Scots forming a column, and this is of course also similar to how ants operate. This is all seemingly to grab what I think is a battery, which will likely help power the ship so that Kang can, can travel through the multiverse. not want her to watch this. We had a deal. You thought you could win. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. I'm sorry, Cassie. Now, according to rumours on the film, we will be travelling to the Quantum Nexus, which is a place that exists at the centre of the Quantum Realm. This is an extremely dangerous environment in which all of time and space blend into one, and the rules of reality are thrown out. In the plot leaks that dropped before the trailer released, it said that Scott would go there for Kang, and that he'd come across different versions of himself. Like I said, this was dropped before the first trailer, and seeing that made me think it's real. With this breaching across all different realities, the Ant-Men that we see here might even be on the same mission by alternate Kangs from alternate realities. I think that's what makes the most sense, and they're all going to be meeting at this convergence point in order to get the one item for their specific Kang. As we know, several Kangs are across the multiverse, all fighting for supremacy, and I love the idea that there's an infinite amount out there, and they're all after the same thing so that they can beat the others. Little detail you might have noticed on Scott is that a second version of him seems to come out of the back of his head. If this is a nexus, then that could mean that's a literal point at which reality splits off into other timelines. If you think about how a timeline splits, then there has to be a point deep down in the fabric of everything where it branches off. This would have to happen on a quantum level, so this could be the point where everything splits off. This would explain why Scott keeps splitting, though they could be echoes and not variants. A bit confused, but that's just my big theory time. If you did time, if you did time. And we of course also get the giant Ant-Man splitting off into ribbons. It's a similar effect we've seen twice in the MCU now, with it happening to Mantis in Infinity War and Reed Richards in Multiverse of Madness. These were both linked to reality, with the reality stone changing Mantis, and Wanda's reality warping powers being the things that turned Reed into Mom's spaghetti. Should have called it the 838 Mile Universe, hey, I'm not. Now anyway, that's going to be a big location that could have multiple Ant-Men, and maybe even some realities where the wasp went there instead. Now this would explain why we see multiple wasps, and I know I'm clutching at theory time here, but it's a possibility I thought when looking at the trailer, at 4 in the morning, bear in mind. Now it is possible that Scott learns how to split reality, and that he can create echoes of himself. This would be the ones that come out, and they're almost similar to how Ghost moves, potentially tying the two characters together. These would stop them being variants that we see here, and instead they'd just be versions of him, rather than those from across the multiverse. Anyway, Kang threatens that he will destroy everything Scott calls a life. You also get the text Witness the Beginning popping up on screen, which is a big thing, as this is of course really the start of Kang's rise to power. This is all going to culminate in Kang Dynasty, and finally finish up with Avengers Secret Wars. Either way, we get a lot of fight scenes at this point, with Kang clearly betraying Scott in his deal, and is also seeing that Scott's willing to lose in order to stop him. You also see Scott falling in the column, interspersed with this, and I'm guessing that he's saved by the wasp who comes flying in. He's the only one who isn't wearing a helmet to keep things simple, and so that we can focus on him instead of getting lost. Anyway, in the end, it seems like Kang's gonna win, and it sets a very dour tone for the entire movie. This is Ant-Man's third film, and if we look back at the MCU, several of the third films in a trilogy often close out with a hero very much losing a part of what made them. Now what I mean by that is that Iron Man 3 ended with Tony throwing away the arc reactor after finding a way to live without it. Cap ended up leaving the approval of the US government after Civil War, and Thor Ragnarok had Asgard being destroyed. For Ant-Man, there are a number of things he could lose, and though I don't think it's going to be his daughter, 
It could be along the lines of Hank, Cope, or something else being taken away from him. Anyway, that closes out the trailer. Very dark, very flashy, looks wild, and yet, yeah, I'm excited for it. And for the next part of the video, I want to talk about how the movie ends according to the plot leaks. Because of that big, big, big spoiler alert for the next part of the video. I told you. Spoiler alert. <laughs> The movie will apparently end with Hope and Scott being trapped in the quantum realm after Kang leaves them down there before he flees to another world. He'll promise Janet in the movie that he'll destroy every world across the multiverse before finally coming for the 616 last. This will sort of set up the events of Kang Dynasty and also Secret Wars. He'll come back from his quest with several of the worlds destroyed and that will end the movie with him having ruined multiple realities and it will be a final stand for all those affected by coming to take the villain down. The Kang we meet here will be the final one they face down against, with he who remains being all who remains on the other side. Anyway, that wraps up the video, and I hope you enjoyed the breakdown. This will probably be the final trailer, as Marvel tend to just do two trailers and then they do multiple TV spots. I'll try and cover them too, but I I'm, bi I'm a busy guy, and but hopefully I see you back at the channel when we do our breakdown on the film. If you want something else to watch, we've got a video on screen right now for you, Telling you it's for you, you're gonna bloody love it. Uh don't know why you're still here. Get yourself over. Have a good have a good day as well. Yeah? Take care of yourself, mate. Peace.